Now, as with many of the pillars, they are interconnected. And similarly, as with the Ten Commandments, um, James said, if you break one, you're guilty of them all. And so with the pillars, for the central pillar of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the sanctuary. Now, whenever you teach the sanctuary, you see in Corinthians that their body is also the temple of God. So with the sanctuary message comes combined with it, the health message. And we know in the most holy place was also manna. So therefore, the health message is critical, just as the sanctuary message in, is indeed critical. And Jesus said, in three days, I will raise it up. And he was speaking about his body. So once again, Jesus linked the temple with his body. Sanctuary message and the health message are very closely intertwined. Right. So we're going to see the importance of the health message. Now, in the Old Testament, when it comes to the church, the pillar, the pinnacle peak when the church was at its highest was during the reign of Solomon. Yes. David brought it very, very high, but Solomon took it up another level because when David was reigning, we know David was a great warrior for the Lord. David didn't lose any battles fighting battles for the Lord. So therefore, all the other nations around Jerusalem, God's people, they were all subdued. And so Solomon, with peace, he didn't have to fight any wars. All the other nations, they're subdued. And Israel is at its height with Solomon. No wars attacking God's people. And we know the Queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon to hear of the wisdom and bring it back to Ethiopia about the great God that Solomon serves. So here we see other nations are coming to God's people during the height of Solomon so that the message can go worldwide, which was always God's plan. Amen. The truth given to Israel, not for Israel to keep it to themselves, but to Israel to spread it to the world. Yeah. And God's name will be glorified. Now, in our church, we also had a pinnacle and it has directly to do with the health message during the time period with Dr. Kellogg. Heard of Dr. Kellogg? Yes. Indeed. So when Dr. Kellogg at the beginning with the sanitarium there in Battle Creek, visitors were coming to the sanitarium because they were hearing about the wonderful work being done. Names that you will know such as J.C. Penney, Henry Ford, Amelia Earhart, Thomas Edison, President Taft, President Warren Harding, and President Herbert Hoover. All of these individuals either endorsed the sanctuary or visited themselves. And there were many other individuals who came. So just as with Solomon, the world was coming, Queen of Sheba, to learn. So with the health message, with Kella, leaders, presidents coming to hear, and here the message can spread about. Because the message is not only physical, it's spiritual combined. Yeah. So that is how we were seeing the heights there in our church when the health message was doing its work and God was tremendously blessing at that time. However, transition has taken place. So much so that in 1893, Ellen White wrote, the time of test is just upon us for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ, the sin pardoning redeemer. So in 1893, when that work, the medical missionary work going forward, souls are being converted, people are being healed, individuals are coming into the world to say, what is this that you know, this message you have? At that time period, she said the loud cry of the third angel message has already begun in the righteous in the revelation of the righteousness of christ because what other method best displays the true righteousness of christ in doing the very works of christ in having a love for souls so much so that you want them to be healed yes. from their diseases yes. so the health message the pillar of the health message god has given this to us to open doors yes. because we know in these last days, the hearts of many is wax cold. 
So individuals are many times opposed to hearing about repentance and hear about changing their ways because Satan has a, such a stronghold. But the health message rightly used can open the doors to human hearts so that we can help them and therefore also now that they're open, we can also give them the full three angels messages in totality. Now, Ellen White wrote in Ministry of Healing, page 143, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. Christ's method alone. What did Christ do? The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. So this one paragraph here, Christ's method alone will gain true success. So the true successful method of evangelism is following Jesus' method. What did he do? He mingled with men as one who desired their good. He didn't hide himself away. He went to the people. Then what did he do? He showed sympathy for them. Understanding their needs, sympathy for them. And then he ministered to their needs. And one of the main way which Jesus ministered their needs was in the works of healing. You know that multitudes came to follow to Jesus to be healed from their different maladies and conditions. And then he bid them follow me. So this is why we are not having as a church on a whole global scale as much effectiveness in evangelism is because we're not using this blueprint. We're doing just the preaching alone when the hearts of individuals are cold, not using the right arm, and we wonder why we have so much few conversions taking place. Because Satan, through especially the devices, the cell phones and the iPads and all the technology, people, their brains is just always fast, fast, fast. So to hear someone up there preaching, that, uh, this is too boring, and then they go into swiping or they go on their phone. So because of the way how Satan has a stronghold on the minds, in the time of Noah, it said the hearts of man was only evil continually. But Jesus says, as it was now, is going to be as it was in the days of. So if the hearts of mankind now, like then, is evil continually, are they really going to be interested in spiritual things? No, because they're carnal. So therefore, we have to use a way to break through the prejudice, break through the carnality, and God says his method of doing that is using the health message. Yeah. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. Christ's method alone. So if we don't use that method, and we say, Lord, why is this not happening? Are you following Christ's example? And then if you have meager results, well, that could be the reason why. Ministry of Healing, page 19. During his ministry, Jesus devoted more time to healing the sick than to preaching. So most of his time is healing individuals even more than the preaching. We know the Sermon on the Mount and many other Olivet Discourses. Jesus gave also the parables many times to the disciples and sometimes to the people they are listening. But he devoted more time to healing. Now we as a church, are we devoting more time to healing or to preaching? Preaching. See, once again, we're not following Christ's method, and Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. So therefore, this is why the health message has been pushed aside and is just focusing on preaching alone. And so much so that in some churches, the health message has just been resorted to a little bit of a little tiny nugget. We give you five minutes to talk a little bit about health. Maybe ten minutes, and that's it. You maybe get one Sabbath in a year on health and temperance day. But Jesus did more healing than preaching. And Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. So everything is turned upside down. And therefore, this is why we're in the condition we're in. So Jesus was concerned for the people and he went about doing good. 
So let's go to our Bibles. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and onward. So let's see the example of our Lord. What did Jesus do while he was upon this earth? The Bible says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame, fame, notice that, by Jesus healing, by Jesus teaching in the synagogues, and his preaching, his fame went throughout all Syria. So now people are saying, you have to come to hear this man. What's he doing? What's so special about this man? Not only is he preaching, he's healing people. Come see this man. So therefore, it went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Healed them. Verse 25, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. So notice, Jesus healing, preaching, teaching. The fame of Jesus is spreading abroad. And therefore, when they tell others about what this man is doing, the first thing they do is they bring in their sick to be healed. And Jesus also cast out devils as well. And multitudes are coming to see Jesus because he's taking care of their needs, needs of the people. Let's go to Matthew 9, verse 35, continuing on. Because Peter says we ought to follow Jesus' example. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. The Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moving compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So notice here, Jesus preaching, teaching, healing again. Multitudes are following him. And then he says that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few and to pray for the lord of the harvest to send forth labors labor is doing what healing preaching and teaching so therefore this threefold work is the call basic for every minister of the gospel is to preach to teach and to heal but what has happened now the ministers just resort primarily to preaching, preaching and teaching and that third critical aspect, which brings the multitudes, are left out. And this is the, the problem, because even in the time of Christ, when Jesus cleansed the leper, he said them to go to the priest, and the priest will make the determination if you can be back amongst the people. So the priests, that from Leviticus time going forward, they had knowledge of disease, because they would make the determination, yes, this leper is cleansed. So therefore, in our day, the ministers in the church need to have knowledge of how to help people who are sick. But when they go to Andrews, are they getting classes through all the hydrotherapy and the laws of health? And no, no. Greek, Hebrew, and just Bible alone, if that, because some of them is all new theology now. But think about it. Where is the healing? Where is the healing? Where is the institutes of learning for the seminary teaching the health message in its totality? So you wonder why many of the pastors and individuals, they themselves, is getting the same sicknesses as the world. Let's see. So this is the problem, that this pillar is being pushed aside as not of a critical thing. But it was during Kelab, the multitudes, kings coming, others in the world, influential people like the Thomas Edison coming, and now... 
We are no longer the head. We are way back as the tail. And therefore, others in the world are preaching this health message and millions are watching them via YouTube and other means. Because if we don't do it, God is going to raise up others to do it. But the problem is they can do it to a certain extent because they can tell you about laws of health like sunshine, laws of health about getting enough water in regards to circulation and other things. But they don't have the three angels messages. They don't have the gospel message. The gospel with the power of the gospel. So they can have healthy people, but they still can have anger, hatred, animosity, and break the other commandments. Healthy sinners. Healthy sinners. So the gospel is so powerful. God wants us to be keeping his law, the health message, and therefore we can be a witness to others. But what's happening now is that we have delegated the health message to not importance, and instead of using God's method, going and building up hospitals mm. which is not helping people with their problem the saddest part indeed is that that whole time all those years and that has taken place the past few years and throughout that time especially with all the shutdown many amongst us have took taken no time to study health at all right Many people were, they couldn't go into work. You have so much time now mm. to dedicate to learning where knowledge is at our fingertips, but people are in the same state in their knowledge of health as they are now, as they were then. And it's still, they still don't know what to do. Mm. So this is the critical. Some people have not learned anything from the past few years. They learned nothing. Same state that they're in mentally in regards to health. So let's go to Matthew chapter 15, because we're gonna we're building here. Matthew chapter 15, and we'll start here as we're looking at the example of Jesus, verse 30. Matthew 15, verse 30. The Bible says, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, lame blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. That's the point. These sick people were coming, maimed, blind, lame. They come to Jesus. Jesus healed them, and they glorified the God of Hallelujah. Israel. So when the health message is rightly done, as we saw, Christ's method alone give true success in reaching the people. As if we are doing this type of work, then the God of Israel will be glorified and we will see true conversions. Now, when it talks about the other pillars that we have here, this one, victory over sin and righteousness by faith, one, two, and the sanctuary, these pillars. The health message is critical to it. Why? Because victory over sin, the core essence of it is surrender of self. Yes. Now, the greatest battle we have is the battle with self. Now, what can help us to get the victory of that is if you get the victory over appetite. So she says, if you get the victory over appetite, you have the moral power to get the victory over every other sin. So when we're talking about victory over sin, receiving the latter rain, Health message, because if you have power so that, okay, let's say you're in, a person is in the world. They have this lifestyle. They're, what do most people do? They go to Starbucks, drink coffee, right? Coffee. Then they, therefore, then they're dehydrated. They can't sleep at night. The nerves are shot. They have all these problems. Migraines from this Starbucks coffee. They're addicted now from the caffeine. But now with the health message and then they're learning even though with that struggle their body's calling for it they're not drinking it they're not drinking it and when you can get power over appetite yes you are strengthening the body so that now you can get victory over other sins Amen. because appetite is one of the greatest struggles we abide with and that's why satan came first with that temptation mm -hmm. satan wanted to get jesus on the first temptation he brought that strong temptation first after Jesus is at the point of death of starvation, turns his stone into bread. Appetite. And this is how he's getting multitudes in these last days. 
The Bible says eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage is with appetite. So if we disregard the health message, how are you going to get the latter rain when you can't conquer appetite? So this is why when we talk about righteousness by faith, victory over sin, the health message is critical. Yes. Because the health message is all about getting your mind clear so that God can commune with you. Getting your mind clear so that you can memorize scriptures and have it kept there. It's all about the whole body. The health message is about physical, mental, spiritual, and social. The our whole being, not just one aspect of it. The whole man is what the health message addresses. But if we don't see the importance of it, you're not going to be fully sanctified and you will not get the latter rain because you're going to be in violation of God's physical law. Because just case for an example, if you stay up all night, you go to sleep, let's say two o'clock, one o'clock, and then the next day you go to work, you haven't got enough snap, you're going to be irritable. Yeah. And the next thing someone says to you, you snap at them. That's not reflecting Christ's character. But because you violate the law of hell, therefore you just violate another commandment. So if you are, if someone says something and then you respond to them, you fall under commandment number six. That's not reflecting Christ's character. And commandment number three. So it's directly linked. If you keep violating God's Physical laws, you're violating God's moral law. But what spiritual things are spiritually discerned. True. But this is why the health message is not getting the emphasis. But Peter says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So as we just read in Matthew, all these passages, what was the example that Jesus is giving us? The preaching, the teaching, and the healing aspect. And this is why Ellen White also says we should educate, educate, educate the people. But the problem now is that, not, and that message is for the world, but now you have to educate Adventists. Who should already know this so much so that Adventist medical missionaries got to be used on most of the time to teach Adventists who themselves should be teaching worldly people the truth of the health message. So we are so backward. How will we ever get ready for the world when those among us don't even understand the health message or study? So that we're spending so much time on teaching Adventists when the Adventists have the same books the medical missionaries have when they themselves should be helping the people in the world. So this round and round, it, it's, not, it's not working. And therefore, we are in this state because as you mentioned that those say, oh, well, the gospel is not about health. The health is not a part of the gospel. So when that pastor disregards a health message and he himself gets cancer, is that glorifying God? No. No. So therefore, this is why many ministers are dying the same diseases of the world because they say it's not the health message does not have nothing to do with the gospel. But we already see in Corinthians, if you destroy this temple, God will destroy. So therefore, this temple is where God wants to dwell. We can't do anything we please with our body yeah. and think that we're not violating God's law. Spiritually, things are spiritually discerned. So therefore. Now, as was mentioned earlier, in regards to these last days, Matthew 24, verse 7. We're staying in Matthew. Matthew 24, verse 7. Just stressing today the importance of the health message in regards to character perfection and in regards to evangelism. The Bible says, for nation shall rise against nation, nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. diverse places, different places. And it mentions pestilences and pestilences can be interpreted, defined as plagues and infectious diseases. Now, notice in that verse, it doesn't say how it comes about man-made pestilences or Satan brought pestilences. Or, interestingly enough, do you know in the Bible, God himself sends pestilence on his people? Let's go to 1 Chronicles. Let's go to Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 21. Because we are seeing in Matthew 24, which deals with end times, that there will be pestilences, diseases. So therefore, 
if we know there's going to be pestilences, should not everyone among us be knowledgeable about health, knowing that there's going to be diseases prevalent? And if we're to follow Jesus' example, we're supposed to help those who have are affected by the pestilences, yeah. not infected like them and in the same condition as them. We should know about having health so that we can have our body strong so that what the world suffer with, we are still in health because we know how to care for our bodies. First Chronicles chapter 21. And we're going to look at verse 14. Now, the context here is, remember David over Israel? Yes. There was a few things David did which was not good. We know with Bathsheba and then having Uriah kill, and here he numbered Israel. And then the other major blunder you could say for David is when he went before the priest and did not tell the truth. So those three were the main three things which David did incorrectly. But here, this is one of them. He numbered Israel. And even his, his, um, his nephew warned him, don't do it, don't do it, Joab, but he still did it anyway. So here, 1 Chronicles 21, verse 14. He had a choice of what does he want. Let's look at, let's get the context. Choose three, verse 11. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, choose thee, either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, the, the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence. pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now, therefore, advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. Verse 13. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now in the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. Verse 14. So the Lord sends pestilence. There it is, pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men, numbering Israel. Seventy thousand men dead. So that's an example there of God sending pestilence. Second Chronicles now. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Now, this is, once again, a well-known verse, verse 14, but this is the context of verse 13 before we get to the known verse 14. Now, this is dealing with Solomon. For context, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to make thyself for an house of sacrifice. If I, God, shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence. Who's sending the pestilence? God among my people. Verse 14, this we know. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... Will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land? So that's the context of that well-known verse. God said here once again, if I send pestilence amongst his people. So we are seeing from scripture, God himself can send pestilence. We see here, we know Satan can bring pestilence as well. But Satan many times works through men. And men in labs can create pestilence as well. So we have these three things to look out for, right? But let's not concern God. Let's look at the two, Satan and Man. mankind. So knowing that can happen, we as a people have a work to do in regards to? Health message. Because there's pestilence coming. Man, Satan. Now let's get Satan. Great Controversy 589, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest, and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint, and thousands perish by the pestilence. Wow. So that's Great Controversy. 
So if we see Jesus warned us in Matthew 24, there's going to be pestilences. We read great controversy. Here we see that Satan is exercising his power and thousands will perish by pestilences. And we know wicked men can bring pestilences. Why isn't the health message at the forefront of warning the world regarding pestilences? Now, if you know that pestilences are coming, certain of the Lord says thousands will perish. You as a Christian, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to realize, hold on, if there's going to be a lot of people dying, what if they're dying not in Christ? So you now got to say, death is going to come. Not so I need to be effective in evangelism so that if these people die, at least let them die in Christ. But this mentality that, well, prophecy said this is going to happen. Oh, well, it's coming, it's coming. And then you're going to just go and do the same response as the world. So therefore, that loving your neighbor as yourself should prompt an individual, I got to help people. Because remember, Jesus, what was he doing in all through Matthew? He's preaching. He's preaching and he's healing. And, healing. and therefore, multitudes are coming. Multitudes are coming. And this is why we're not seeing the multitudes coming to us. Because we're not exalting this health. Myth. What are we doing? Exalting. Oh, we got these hospitals. Which doing drugs, which we were never called to have drugs of hearts in our so, so, so. work. Why people are destroyed for lack of knowledge? Because we rejected knowledge. So the knowledge is there. The books are there. But once again, it's not given the priority that it's needed. And this is why. This is the calamity in Adventism right now. You go to most, you just go to visit churches. And when it's intercessory time for prayer. You'll notice how many prayers is for this sister has cancer, yeah. this person yeah. has this, and then I just listen, and then I'm listening. And all of these prayers are for lifestyle diseases. Yes. So it's individuals rejecting the health message that brought this sickness upon themselves. Oh, pray for this one with cancer, pray for this one with cancer. I thought that we are supposed to be the healthy ones to help the people who are sick. sick. So just the very fact, just the intercession prayer time. How much prayer is for sicknesses that is life sta lifestyle diseases? Why? This is not being followed. It's not being followed. So therefore, God is, God is not going to say, okay, my people, you could do whatever you want and you won't get sick. No, no, no. If you violate the laws, the sickness will come. So this is why we see so much time of prayer for sick. Why? Why? It's one thing if a calamity strikes, God forbid, an accident or something like that. But this is this lifestyle problems that people are having. So some among us are, they're at the same level of health as the world. Same level. And you wonder. And they take the health message as just, well, I don't eat shrimp. I don't eat lobster. Um, I don't drink coffee, right. and uh, that's all the health message. Well, that's all the health. And what Ellen White says, especially among females, that's most co that comes from the Lord, most will have to do a decided change in dress, because, especially for the females, these designers of clothes is all designing them to accentuate the certain private parts of females and the upper body of females to bring in lust. So therefore, they go. It's, they can't even find a dress. They got a high low cut here. It's tight cleavage here, cleavage here. You can't everything back out, violating all the laws of health. So, so if we disregard this, how is modesty practiced among us? If we disregard this, you see how it links with the moral law. Yes. So this is the calamity we are in by pushing this aside. We are sins, seeing sins going rampant. All amongst us. And this is why we are seeing all these cancers. Because, well, we're using deodorants that have aluminum and all these chemicals in them. And then many of the perms doing all these problems, that chemicals coming into the body. And you see all these cancers. What is causing it? Well, it's a lot of things that they are putting on the body or in the body. Why a lot of these cancers are coming up. Also, with the antiperspirants. Your body is to perspire to rid the body of toxins. But if we're using deodorants, which is antiperspirant, so you do not sweat, what is happening? All of the thing is remaining inside. And therefore, these can accumulate and end up causing tumors. You see, once again, 
these things are not being taught. So when many among us get cancer, how did I get this cancer? There's a cause for everything. But when, if we keep on rejecting this, we're going to keep on having to pray for individuals with diabetes, with cancers, and all these problems and strokes because this is continually violated. But yet we say the gospel is not, the health message is not the gospel. We don't have to be concerned. It's all about, it's all about following and loving God. Hmm. They were none of it. So therefore, so you read, but you will sow. And the sowing is ending up in the hospital, and therefore, there is the reaping. We cannot just despise, and think about it. Look how much Ellen White wrote about milk. So many articles, books on this topic. We have councils on health, councils on diets and foods, ministry of healing, articles, that review and herald articles, so much health reformer. But for some among us, when it comes to Ellen White, Steps of Christ, great controversy, desire of ages, maybe patriarchs and prophets, maybe your early writings, and that, that's it. Have you read any of the health council? No. So that's the situation of many Adventists. They might have read Steps of Christ, maybe Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, maybe great controversy, but nothing on regards to health. <laughs> nothing. So how are you going to live? How are you living and glorifying God if you know nothing about health? But I don't eat shrimp. I don't eat lobster. Yeah. I don't drink coffee. And that's everything. That's the whole health message right there. Clean and unclean, and I don't smoke. That's it for some people. We have problems. Sometimes even parents don't realize that some of these they give their children all these gummies with all these dyes, which can lead to cancer. And some of them is filled with gelatin. And gelatin is from what? Yeah. The pig. So you may not even realize that as a parent that you could be giving them things that have pig in it. And all these colorful dyes are cancer causing. Red 40, this color, this blue, this deep. So therefore, Satan is doing all that he can so that people will eat things and drink things and do things to their body will get their mind not connected with the Lord so that the Holy Spirit cannot abide in them so that they will be disqualified from getting the latter rain. It's a, an all grown out attack. We're enough for the mercy of God. It's amazing that we are still alive. When from pollution, from almost everything, you, the soaps, you got to look for clear, good soap. You got to look for good um, shampoos, good conditioners without all those chemicals in this. Peg this and all of these things. And your food, you got to look for no high fructose corn syrup because that leads to diabetes and stops down the vitamin D creation in the body. You have, they're attacking on all levels. But if you have no knowledge of this, oh, I like this. Eat, I like this. Eat, I like this. Eat, I put this on here. And then cancers come. Why me? Why me? Where is God? Why am I having this cancer? But as you said, you despised, you were none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Indeed. So therefore, we have to be diligent. It's an all-out battle for your body and your soul Satan is gambling for. So therefore, we have to have discernment, read labels, and see what is quality brands, who are manufacturers, well, what we put on our bodies and what we are eating. Satan wants to kill off the human race yes. and have them dead in trespasses and sins and loss. That's his goal. So therefore, as, as adults, as all of us who have this message, we got to be on guard. And when we learn truth, we share truth. Yes. And you tell your cousins about these things. Tell you, tell, there's a reason why Barbara O'Neill is getting so popular now. Because of the health message. Because many people who are not Adventists are watching her. And they're learning. And Dr. Eric Berg on YouTube. Millions of views. Because people are now, some are waking up while the children of this world are in this generation. Why isn't there children of light? And they're jumping on board and learning things. And these same things that they're learning will tell to another SD. And they're saying, oh, I didn't know that. I see. Well, it's all in the books from the 1900s. 
but they are despising it. So now, evangelism. Let's leave with evangelism with the health message. Councils on the Ice of Food, page 75. Much of the prejudice that prevents the truth of the third angel's message from reaching the hearts of the people might be removed if more attention were given to health reform. So when they say the, the health message and the three angels' messages, right here, much of the prejudice might be removed if attention were given to health reform. Why are the pastors not preaching? They limit it. When people become interested in this subject, this pillar right here, when people become interested in this subject, the way is often prepared for the entrance of other truths. Other truths, state of the dead, all the other truths we have with the health message first. If they see that we are intelligent with regard to health, they will be more ready to believe that we are sound in Bible doctrine. So therefore, we have powerful pillars here that the world needs. The law of God, and especially state of the dead. Because you know the last battle, the mark of the beast crisis is over, the law of God, the Sabbath, and the state of the dead. Satan is going to come with those miracles in spiritualism. So the best way in which we can get people to first understand these two pillars is we have to use this. So that we can get to their minds. Wow, you know all this about health? This is great. What else do you know? Mm. Well, I'll tell you, Satan is going to appear as Christ. Demons are going to impersonate your loved ones, and they're going to tell you to worship on Sunday. There's going to be a law. <gasps> really? Yes. And you can share more. But remember, we feel we know it all. We feel we can disregard what God says, and we can have success doing it our way. And this is why we are in the condition. Not only that does it remove prejudice, it is the entering wedge. I can see in the Lord's prominence that the medical missionary work is to be the great entering wedge whereby the disease soul may be reached. Notice she said disease soul may be reached with the health message. Why the seminary is not teaching it? Why did they not teach it? I thought that's where it's supposed to be equipped for the ministry. What ministry are they doing? Not the example of Christ, because we saw what Jesus' ministry was in Matthew, but they're not doing that ministry. So, what else does it do? Lessens the suffering. Now, this is what I spoke about, loving your neighbor as yourself. The work of health reform is the Lord means for lessening suffering in our world. Is there suffering in our world? Yes. It's everywhere. Teach the people that they can act as God's helping hand by cooperating with the master worker in restoring physical and spiritual health. Combine physical and spiritual health. This work bears the signature of heaven. Come on. Physical and spiritual bears the signature of heaven. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. And will open doors for the entrance of other precious truths. Same thing again. So while we have these pillars to give to the world, we got to use this pillar to open the way so that they can accept all the other pillars. It's foolish is trying to tell them victory over sin and we don't use the health message. So this is how we have to use it the way that God sees fit. This is the entering wedge. Lessens the suffering in our world. So let's talk about suffering. One of the diseases, I'll just touch on one of them, which many people suffer from in this world Let's deal with diabetes, because the health message is to lessen the suffering in our world. Just look at some of these statistics. 5.8 million diabetics there were in 1980. By 2005, this number has jumped to an all-time 20.8 million. So for Caribbean people, that will be the whole of Jamaica, the whole of Trinidad combined, Put Barbados, put St. Vincent, put many of these islands combined. Every person would have been a diabetic. Multiple islands is not even 20 million. Picture everyone with diabetes. That's how many. It has tripled. So therefore, lifetime risk of getting diseases in the United States for Caucasians is 39% for women and 33% for men. So talk about suffering. 
People who have diabetes have many other comorbidities, other issues they have to deal with, multiple complications. So one of them with diabetes, heart disease and stroke kill 80% of diabetics. You got diabetes, but now you at 80% risk of getting stroke and heart disease. And we know the number one killer is heart disease. Okay, not only that, three out of four diabetics have high blood pressure. High blood pressure. Now, linking with high blood pressure causes this other problem, which many have end stage renal disease. You're on dialysis. Due to one of the main reasons for dialysis is high blood pressure, diabetes. That causes the kidneys to shut down. So you, you're at a risk for stroke, risk for heart disease, therefore, also high blood pressure. And then combined with that, with diabetes, is the number one cause of blindness. Blindness. For the 24,000 new cases each year. So is this suffering in our world? Just from the diabetes, you can get the blindness, high blood pressure, all of these other issues to suffer from. As I mentioned with the kidney disease in, 25, in 2005, 46,000 new cases of kidney failure resulting from diabetes. This is why you see in the di dialysis centers all over the place popping up. Mm -hmm. It's because, and this is primarily lifestyle disease, 30 to 50% of diabetics suffer nerve damage that results in carpal tunnel syndrome, pain or numbness in the feet or hands, and slow digestion of food. Now, combined with more suffering with the diabetes is the greatest cause of amputations. Mm -hmm. So, you see all the risks in there? Now, with amputations, therefore, uh, their legs might have to be chopped off. A diabetic has 10 times the risk of amputation. There are over 80,000 amputations per year in diabetics alone. So, we have this message. So, if we are not going forward with this message, these numbers are going to continue to skyrocket. And we who know how to prevent, because this is primarily lifestyle, especially type 2 diabetes, we can be reversed. But are we sharing this message? But if we all were, as I said in the quote, we will be reducing the suffering in our world. Less people amputated, less people who are having all these other issues. Is there more with diabetes? Yes, there is. Diabetes are 10 to 34% more likely to become depressed. Now picture if you lose an arm or your leg, of course, you're going to be depressed because now someone else has to help you for everything. You're, you're saddened now. They experience more mood and memory changes. And that studies show that their brains actually shrink. Life expectancy for diabetes reduced by 12 to 14 years. So their lifespan is decreased. And that's just one disease and all these other issues that diseases that are prevalent now. So how can we be a Christian knowing these type of statistics and we do nothing to help to reduce the suffering by sharing this pillar with people? When that was the work of Christ. And that's why multitudes flocked to him. There is so much that needs to be shared in regards to this topic that it's so sad. And this is why, case in point, why over these last few years, why God's people acted the way they did. As if this doesn't even exist. As if we don't even have this. Yeah. Oh, mercy. This health reform work, I was shown again that the health reform is one branch of the great work, which is to fit up people for the coming of the Lord. Character perfection. The Elijah message. The health message. It is as closely connected with the third angel's message as the hand is with the body. Now think about it with the hand. One of the things you people do with their hands is they open a door. If you had no hands, how are you going to open a door or a doorknob? You can't get in. So therefore... What the health message does as a hand, right arm of the gospel, it opens that door. So now you can give them the truth. 
So now what we're trying to do as a church, we're trying to barricade through a door of carnal people with the gospel without using the right arm. So we just bang it into them, bang it into them, bang it into them. Why are not few people responding to the gospel message? And then you say, well, it's just because people just don't want to have nothing to do with God. They're just Satan has them all. And therefore, that's why it's hard to reach people now. We live in the last days. They're so carnal. Yes, they're carnal. But we not using the, the counsel that we're giving said we would have more success if we use that right arm. So what we're doing is we're not using the arm and we're trying to barricade truth into people without using the right arm. Right. Trying to hammer truth into yeah, people exactly. yes. whose minds are so clouded yeah. and so full of all of this things that they're listening to, the music and everything, the distractions. You could preach a message to them. They may not. But 10 minutes later, everything is gone. Like the parable of the sower. And the first one, when he plants the seed, that Satan just comes and snatches it away. That is preaching the gospel without using a health message. Satan is just going to, mine is not going to sink in. Because Christ's method alone will give true success. Ted Wilson, you don't know this? The leaders, you don't know this? This should be from the mouth, from the top. Every minister should be rightly trained and should be teaching all their congregations the health message. And now let's go out and work. So if all of us know this and the, your co-workers, which you know, your neighbor, which you know, you have conversations with them. I have conversation with my neighbor. We and him talk about health. And he watches some of the same people I tell him about. Talk to a co-worker during the last two years. She got it. She overcame it. But then they forced her with the mandate, and they still had to go get the thing. But overcame it with remedies. Amen. And it worked. So it shows God's method. It works. True. But we need this knowledge first, and then we implement it on ourselves, and then we share it. I always have been sad in how this is being rejected. When the importance of it, and yet we say, Oh, Jesus, we want you to come back. We want you to come back. We want you to come back. Well, why are we not, why are we not using this pillar? We're not using it as we should. All right, now. <laughs> you have two choices. You have two choices. Two choices is this. You're going to follow God's way or you're subject to big pharma. There is no other alternative you have. Because if you don't know anything about health and you get sick, you're going to go to the doctor. And the doctor is a person under Big Pharma and he's going to say, take this pill, take this drug. So therefore, it's either Big Pharma or God's way. And because there is no other choice, Big Pharma might say, oh, this is so bad. You know what you have to do? Surgery. Big money surgery, chop this off, chop this off. And because they don't view the person as a whole being, oh, take out this gallbladder. Not realizing that that will affect so many other functions in the body. Oh, this thing is not working, just we'll take this out. We'll remove this. A woman has this out, just remove her reproductive system. She has fibroids. We'll take up, just chop off the breast. Just chop, 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 chop. Big farmer's way or God's way. Two choices. So if you want to be subject to Big Pharma, just know everything has side effects and it's going to affect your whole body. And if you violate physical law, you're going to violate moral law. Mm -hmm. Instantaneously. But Testimonies Volume 5, page 443 says, there are many ways of practicing the healing heart arts, but there is only one way that heavens approves. One way. Which way is that? God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature, not drugs, that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. So what this statement is saying is that the drugs that the doctors will give you, what do they do? They debilitate the system and they are not natural. They're made in a lab. Synthetic stuff. What else? Pure air. Water. Cleanliness. Senator, we need to be teaching the people in regards to keeping their rooms clean, washing their sheets, because 
people in this world don't even abide in regards to their health, in regards to some people don't even shower twice. Some people don't even wash their sheets weekly. And next thing they want, they're sleeping in the same thing. Your body's shedding at night. They don't wash their stuff. They don't change their sheets. They don't dust. Dust is everywhere. They're breathing that in. They don't open windows. Just simple stuff most people don't even do. And then that's why the whole Ministry of Healing has a whole section that deals with sanitary. I mean, you would think people would know this. Most people don't even know this. Some people don't even brush their teeth twice a day or three times a day. They don't even brush their teeth. Sometimes just one time before they go into sleep. And they wonder why, oh, I got all these cavities. I got all these cavities. Are you, are you brushing your teeth? Simple stuff most people aren't doing. Simple stuff in regards to sanitation. So this is stuff you have to teach. But what's my point again? Why I gotta be teaching this same stuff to Adventists who have the same books which I can read? Why can't they read it themselves? Why? This is the crazy part of it all. What are you doing with your time? So some say, oh, well, well, I'm busy. This job keeps me busy. Okay, what are you doing on the Sabbath? 24 hours, what are you doing on the Sabbath? You tell me you can't pick up one of these books and read? 24 hours, you telling me the Sabbath, 52 Sabbaths a year, and you still can't learn anything about health on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. What's your excuse for that, for the Sabbath? So you see, we have no excuse. What are you doing with your time? We have to be concerned. One, if you're not concerned about the people out there, well, then you're going to be subject to big pharma sometime in the future. In a hospital, and then, oh, what is that? Well, the doctor ordered it, inject this. What was that? I don't know. Put it, just pump it stuff in you. And then they'll tell you, okay, take this pill, and they give you this bitch of water to drink. This little bit, this little tiny cup. How is this little tiny cup going to deal with this strong drug on my kidneys and my liver, and then more problems will arise. So this is the choice. God's way or subject to big pharma. If you don't want to learn about health, you're going to get sick in the hospital, and therefore they're going to do what as they please with you, as like you're in jail. You're in that bed, they're just going to do what as they please with you. Inject it. And if no one is visiting you to speak up on your behalf, things will happen to you. You don't even know it. They just have the line there and inject stuff in there. Take your pay. As we spoke about prior, that during the last two years, it's a prime time for people who didn't know to learn. Some still haven't learned. But now let's talk about parents now. Mothers and fathers having children. How long does a woman have the baby in her belly growing, growing, growing? Nine months. So that mother has nine months to learn about health. Because what? When that little baby gets sick and gets a cold, what's the mommy going to do? If she doesn't know, what's she going to run to? And what's the doctor going to say? Prescription. Prescription, another drug. Right? So you see, from the little tiny babies, Big Pharma says, that baby is mine. As soon as the baby is born, comes out, boom, vitamin K, the gook in the eye, stuff being done, boom. Big Pharma says, every human being belongs to me. That's how they feel. So that's why this whole pushback, if you don't go along, because they feel that they own everybody. From their come into this world, they're pope, they're this and that. So therefore, if we now, as a parent, using that nine months time period, where you're thinking of, oh, well, what name am I going to give the child in this? You got to be thinking and learning, well, what happened if this child gets sick? What happened if this child gets this? Sometimes they don't breastfeed the child, they give them formula, and then the child gets all this mucus in the body and gets all these ear infections and these things. Why? What's the cause? And then they go and get a prescription, take the stroke. But the cause is milk, the dairy. So we got to see the cause of things. And therefore, once again, nine months, the belly is growing. Father and mother, learn about health. Because that little child, when that child gets sick, once again, big pharma or the health message. Two choices once again. But the problem is that little child can't make a decision for themselves. So if the parents keep choosing big pharma and my child is constantly sick and sick and sick and sick, what's going on? Will God hold the parent responsible? Yes. yes. I brought that child into you. I allowed this child to be born. Why didn't you read something for nine months about health? So that's how critical it is. Two choices. Big pharma. 
or God's method of healing. When sickness comes, you have two choices. You have two choices. So this is why with parents, Ellen White says, health reformer, mothers are accountable in a great degree for the health and the lives of their children and should become intelligent in regard to the laws which life and health depend. Their work does not end here. They should carefully educate their children upon this subject that they may, by obedience to nature's laws, avoid disease and secure health and happiness. So then when someone is pregnant, oh, congratulations. Oh, here's a nutrition book. Here's a, here's a book on anatomy and physiology. Can we do that? No, we just have, we have in our party, we'll get you all these gifts and stuff. Or I'll get you onesies and diapers and stuff in a baby shower. But the mother and the father needs to understand if they didn't know before, how do they take care of this new being and the laws of health so that this child will be healthy and not subject to big pharma. This is why we have to, to teach. You got those nine months there, take good use of them. So as a person, this is why it's incumbent upon us as a female, if you want to in the future have children, well, you need to learn about health because you're gonna be a mother one of these things. And if not even that, you need to know yourselves so that you don't sell are subject to big pharma. They're already super billionaires. Why do they need more? Mm -hmm. So God knew that this would be taking place and we need to help people in this way. And in regards to the health message, the Bible speaks about sanitation in Leviticus. The Bible speaks about those who are sick, about those who are dead needs to be buried. The Bible speaks so much on many different topics about wine is a marker, strong drinking is raging, to stay away from alcohol, wine, and all these things with the mind. All of this is in the Bible. So now you may ask yourself, in regards to why does God want his people to use simple remedies instead of depending upon miracle healings in answer to prayer? Because this person is sick. I say, oh, the church, pray for this person. And they just want this person to be healed immediately. Now, we saw some of those type of healings in the early reign in Pentecost, that those type of healings. But in these last days, we don't see that as much. Why? The reason why is many of these individuals are themselves purposefully violating the laws of health. That would be like a smoker smoking, get lung cancer, pray for me that this cancer goes away. And then if they, the cancer was to go away, next day, mm -hmm. smoking again. So then God will be attributing to this, sin, to this sin to continually keep taking place. He's not going to answer that sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayers. The same thing. So this is why many people are not healed. They bring themselves disease upon themselves, and they themselves are not even repentant for bringing that disease upon themselves. They think that, oh, this thing just came upon. Like a mosquito just come out of nowhere and inject them, and, and it, like it just happened to me. For everything, there is a cause. There is a cause for everything. Another reason in regards to this, we are instructed that it would be presumptuous to ask God for healing without making use of the remedies he gives us. He, get, he put these natural herbs and foods that have these life-sustaining properties in them. So God is telling us that we need to use them if situations arise. Don't just jump to prayer. Use what's near you. And that's why in the Bible we saw Jesus put the clay on the person. He could have just spoken the person was got back their sight. Yeah. And then what happened with Isaiah and Hezekiah? Didn't he make a lump of figs and then he was healed? So he's showing through those instances that God wants us to use the natural remedies he has given us. Don't just resort to just prayer alone for people who do not want to change. Another instance why God does not immediately, many times with the prayer, because people must be given an opportunity to learn what it is that made them sick in the first place. That they may be taught what exactly was the laws that they violated. So therefore, this person is sick. And if it's a result to their diet. So you need to understand 
what you are eating is not conducive to health. These things must be discarded from your diet and you need to make changes and taught what now you need to substitute that with. They got to go through this, pro this detoxing process because God is not the author of confusion. Sure. And God is not the minister of sin either. Yeah. He's not going to keep healing people who have no desire to be, to change in their lifestyle. If someone has stress and you say, well, you know, ashwagandha helps with stress. Yeah, it can. But the problem is, what is the cause? So you don't want to just continue that same lifestyle, which brings about the stress and figure this herb will help me. This herb will help me. That's not the purpose of it. It's there when we need it, but it's not a substitute for not changing your lifestyle if it's not in accordance with God's will. Yes. You have to make changes in the right direction because we are to reflect the image of Christ. And lastly, why? Because Satan will seek to capitalize on the spectacular elements of his so-called miraculous healings because we are told in Elder White says Satan is coming as a medical missionary. Remember, he's going to personate Christ and all these things. So people who put trust in that type of miracle working power, oh, come and get healed. Come on down. Come down the aisle. I'll put my hand on you. That type of thing, Satan is capitalizing on that, and he's going to come doing this, and multiple people will be converted to his lies and keep Sunday during the Mark of the Beast crisis. So that's another reason why they've habitually for years now been destroying their life forces with their habits. So now it's going to take time for changing all of that and to teach in the right way. And if we have a person, if we had sanitariums in a sanitarium, we can show them the right way. And you're with this person day by day. Yeah. You also read in the Bible to them yeah. and you're telling them about these other truths. And then they're having a full, true seven day Adventist. Yeah. We'll create from that. Yeah. But we are in the condition because we just reject the truth. Many of the people accept it, but the leadership and they reject. Yeah. They, they have none of this. So therefore, they are boastful. Yes, we got Loma Linda, all these hospitals. We are one of the, we have the most hospitals, blah, 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 blah. Doing drugs and have them in a place which violates the laws of health. Are they getting sunshine in there? Are they getting fresh air in there? They're getting air conditioning in there. They're not getting fresh air in there. No sunlight in there. How is it? How is them in that hospital setting conducive to getting back their health? It's not. Lying on a bed when you're supposed to be active, you gotta that's what exercise is a law of health. So these people need to move. Yes. But then they have this wires connected to them, blood is connected to this pole, and they can barely how to get to get true healing in there. I pray that just through this Bible study has just sparked in your mind a little more of how critical this message is. Yeah. If you're a parent, it's super critical. Even if you're not a parent. Your body is the temple of God. Amen. Christ brought us back. We belong to God. We cannot do as we please with our bodies and think that, oh, it's okay. It's my body. I do. I eat what I want. I drink what I want. I'll go to sleep when I want. I'm my own person. Remember, keep going that lifestyle. Big Father will be smiling. Yes. More billions for us. Another one we can drug up. And have them go to their grave earlier. And Satan has that large grin of laughter. So we guys are people. We got to reduce the type of suffering in our world. Amen. And learn this message. Share this message. And when we do Christ's method. You will see how quickly the end things will come. And Jesus will come back with power. Let us pray. Father in heaven. Thank you so much for thy truth. Thank you so much that in a world of deception and darkness. You have given light to your people. I pray that in these last days, we will take heed to this wonderful message you have given us, a message of life, a message whereby we can reflect your character and not to keep to ourselves, but to share it with others. I pray that you would bless every medical missionary all throughout the world doing their part to share the true gospel of teaching, preaching, and healing combined that you would bless their efforts, that many souls will be converted to the truth and their hearts will be open to accept all of our other critical, vital, pillar truths which you have given to us. Help us, Lord, in this time of prevailing iniquity 
to win souls into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.